In this video, I'm going to show you how to export out of Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2018. Okay, so once you have constructed your edit um, on your timeline, you've got all your clips that you want to use, you've edited them, you've put them all together, you've played it, you've made sure that you are happy with the video, you've added all the effects that you need to, you now want to take all those individually edited video clips and put them all together as one single exported video file. So to do that, if you come over to the timeline, move the playhead to the very start of your video, and if you press I on the keyboard, it will mark it in. You can also, again, mark in using this button up here on the program window. And then if you go to the end of your video clip, scroll right to the end. Again, I just use the arrow key just to jump straight to the end there. and um, That was the downward arrow key, just to make sure that I'm right at the end of the very clips. Maybe sometimes you might have audio that carries on after the last um, video clip is finished, just as it slowly fades out. Um, you can just zoom in here just to make sure you're getting right to the end of the clip. You then want to click O on the keyboard to mark it out, or again, you can use the uh, mark out button on the program window and it will give you this little blue line. You'll then notice that those video clips on the timeline are selected. It's best practice to mark things in and out before you go to export due to the fact that you may have edited a lot down on your timeline and all the way down um, here you might have a video clip that you haven't used and if you export it without marking it in and out it will play this and then it will play black 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 until it gets to that video clip then once that video clip is played it'll the video will end which no one wants you just want your main video that you've created here so I've marked it in and out I'm then going to go to file scroll down to export and I'm going to select media it will then open the export settings window which I'm just going to make a little bit smaller just so it fits on the screen for you so you can see it completely okay so this is what you're greeted with straight away there's a few things that you need to make sure you've changed under format you want to click it it currently says AVI if you've used it before it will probably jump to the last setting you set however the one you want to go for is H.264 that is the setting you want to export it at you then want to go down to output name and where it says, it generally says what you created your sequence called, what you called your sequence. Um, I'm going to select that. This is where you can name your project and also choose where you want to export it to, so where you want it to save. So I'm going to go to my desktop, I'm going to go to my test, my um, folder um, setup that I created, so you should also do that. So if you are editing your short film or your advert or whatever it is you're ed editing, you'll want to go to your folder structure, you'll want to find your exports folder and you'll want to select that. This is where you can also choose to name it. So you might want to um, give it an official name and then maybe add your um, your own name to it as well. Um, and then once you've done that, you can then click save. Most of these bits you don't need to touch because it will just match the settings that you've already set. So f under the video tab down here, you can just scroll past all of this. You don't need it until you get to bitrate settings. This is the bit where you want to make some adjustments. So bitrate encoding is currently set to VBR one pass. You want to change that to two pass. That basically just means it goes through the video twice to get the best um, encode and compression settings possible. You then want to set your maximum bitrate, which is the bottom line. You can pull um, this little circle up and down to adjust the um, settings, or what I'd prefer to do is actually select the number and type it in. So for maximum bitrate, I set that to 20 and hit enter. The target bitrate is where you might want to adjust more or less. So that works in conjunction with the estimated file size, which is just down here. Estimated file size is how big um, Adobe uh, Premiere and Encoder think your video file will be once it's fully exported and compressed. So my uh, video is 30 seconds long so 37 megabytes is probably okay however if you're working for a minute video or three or four minute videos you'll probably want that um, higher so it doesn't look bad so if you adjust this the higher you go for your target bitrate the bigger estimated file size you get the better quality it will be the lower you go with your target bitrate 
the smaller your estimated file size will be and the poorer the quality. So it's about finding that perfect balance of good quality and small file size. You might need to do this export a few times um, until you get the best quality um, settings, but once you've done it a few times, you'll start to understand what the target bitrate should be judging on the size of your video. So for a minute video, Let's just select seven on the target bitrate for now. Um, that's 26 megabytes. Um, this is a 30 second video. For a minute video, like I mentioned, you'd probably want that around 70 megabytes. 70 to 100 megabytes, it would be perfect for a minute video. Um, if you're looking at, um, say, four minute videos, maybe up the hundreds, so maybe go to, like, say, 300, 400 megabytes. Um, that means you'll it's not too large a file size and the quality should still be there. So for this, I'm just going to leave it on 70. I'm going to just adjust the maximum bitrate back down to 20 because it did adjust when I dragged the target bitrate all the way up. I'm then going to scroll up, make sure nothing else changed. All this is greyed out because it's just selected to match source, which is what you set on your sequence settings. I'm then going to click the audio tab. Again, most of this you don't need to touch. I'm just going to scroll down and again, bitrate settings. I'm just going to change that to 128. Um, that just compresses the audio a bit. Um, if you're uploading this to YouTube anyway, it'll compress it anyway. So you might as well just do it now. Or I would say if you're worried about it, just leave it on a 224. That's fine. Once you've done that, you are then good to export and you can click the export button. It will start to export and when it's finished exporting, it will navigate and you can navigate to your folder structure and it will be in that exports folder. So if I just go there now, um, let me try and find it. I haven't got the window open, so let me just navigate to that. So I'm going to go to the desktop. I'm going to go to my test project folder that I set up and then in my exports folder, it will start to build. So currently, these are what it's currently building into a single file. Once it's finished exporting, it will be a single MP4 file, but it's just doing it now. So let's just let that finish. So there you go, it gets to 100% and then that um, window closes. It's finished exporting. So if we minimize Premiere Pro now, we can then find the test project is just in there in my exports folder where I found it. So if we double click that, that should play okay. You, it's always best to play it back fully. Um, make sure you're happy with the quality, make sure your audio works, watch it all the way through before you hand it in um, or upload it to YouTube or whatever you want to do with it. Um, so that exported, that's fine. Um, one last thing you should do, go File, Save Your Project or Control S um, to save your Premiere Pro project just in case you need to go back to make any amendments or re-edits or um, add extra footage or anything like that. But that is how you export from Premiere Pro. Um, I hope you found this video um, useful.